So today I'm going to show you how to hook up the G940 with the mi newest Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a little tricky because there's no presets like there was in FSX, but um, if you follow this tutorial it won't be too difficult. So first thing you're going to want to do is download the Logitech Profiler. This software is available on the Logitech website. The easiest way to get it is type in, go to the support section of the site and type in G940. Once you get there, um, it'll give you the option for the software. Click on more options um, and it will give you the option for the 64-bit version. Once you download that, install it, you're going to need that first um, just to make it recognizable uh, by Microsoft Flight Simulator. So once we got that installed, I'm just going to go over how the devices are named in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to start with the joystick. So you see there's Trigger, Fire, S1, all those names are not going to be in Microsoft Flight Simulator. They're just going to be numbered from 1 to 9. So your trigger is going to be number 1, 2, S1 is actually going to be 3, S2 is going to be 4, and so on. Trigger button's 9. Over here you have your accesses. The mini access is that little one up there. I never got this to work properly. It always, um, it wouldn't really calibrate right. So if you're using that, um, you know, you can find it in there, but I'm not going to really show you how much how to use that today because mine's not calibrated properly. Um, we also have Trim 1, Trim 2, and Trim 3. They're not going to be called that in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I'll show you how to get to those uh, and figure out what they are. Um, once we go to the throttle, as you can see, they have T1, T2, T3, T4. Those are actually going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then the buttons down here are going to be starting with 5. So P1 is really 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's how it's going to be numbered. P8 is 12, not 8 um, for the button in there. Then obviously you have your left throttle and right throttle. We're going to go over what axes those actually are. And then you have the R1 and R2 switch. I never got those to calibrate properly. They always just jumped all over the board. So um, I won't be using those, but I'll show you how to map them if you'd like to. And then lastly, we have the pedals. So um, you have your left toe brake here, right toe brake. Those are two different axes, and then you have your rudder. So we're going to show you how to find those as well. Now, um, it never recognizes the game of Flight Simulator. I'm not sure why. Um, I couldn't find the, the file to uh, make it recognize since it's kind of like an app, not really a game. I'm not really sure. So don't set up any of these profile properties in here. Just install the game. And um, the one other thing you might want to go over is the force feedback. I'm trying to remember where that is. Uh, yeah, here it is. So if you go to the device and hit game controller, you can then have joystick, throttle, and pedals. If you click on joystick and you hit properties, and then you can hit settings. This will enable the force feedback. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't seem to really natively have force feedback, so you're going to want to make sure you enable the centering spring and force feedback games. I put it on max just to try and get it to center as best as possible. It still is not a perfect controller for this game, but it will work. Uh, and then this, uh, I don't mess with this at all. This It seems to work without it. So I'm going to leave this open. We're going to go over to the game now. To get here, I just clicked on the options and controls. Now, if you didn't install that software, these would all be really weird names. They don't work properly. It doesn't really recognize it. Once you install the software, you have the 940 joystick, 940 pedals, and 940 throttle. This will say default here. Once you start trying to change things, it'll ask you to make a new profile, so it's really not that difficult. So the first thing we're going to do for the joystick is I'm going to hit on... We don't want to only see the assigned ones because those are the ones I've uh, done, so I'm going to hit on all. And as you can see, we have all the different types of flight systems. I'm going to go to flight control services, primary flight control services. And as you can see, I already have my joystick assigned, but I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to go to sensitivity here. This is the easiest way to figure out what axis is what. You're going to want to write these down as it may be different on different computers, but just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So you click on sensitivity. 
Now, I didn't adjust this sensitivity or dead zone, and it seems to work fine in FSX. I know you need to fiddle with that. In this game, it seems to work fine. I've never had any issues with not being able to control the plane or brakes activating when they shouldn't. But if you do need to, those are the options right there. So I'm going to move my joystick left and right. And as you can see, the first uh, box is moving quite a bit. So I'm going to write down the joystick L dash access X is going to be my aileron control. Now if I go forward and back, as you can see, my joystick L axis Y is moving. Now obviously I'm moving a little bit left and right at the same time, but obviously the one that's moving the most is Joy L axis Y. Um, so joystick L axis Y is going to be my elevator. Now we do have several other ones on here. Uh, we have uh, one of them is a trim controls. Let's see which one here. Okay, so joystick R axis X, that's going to be trim number two. So you just want to write down joystick R axis X, trim number two. And notice it does go f the full amount, so this one's working fine. Now if I move trim number one, that's not doing anything. Trim number two, I'm sorry, trim number three. Now on mine, trim number three doesn't go all the way up. So when we go into the settings, you're going to see joystick R axis Y, joystick R axis Y minus, and joystick Y R axis, I'm sorry, joystick R axis Y plus. So if I was trying to use trim three, I would just use the one that's minus because I'm using the first half. Minus is basically zero to 50. The whole thing is zero to 100. And the one with plus is 50 to 100. So since this isn't going all the way up for some reason, I would use the 0 to 50 option. It may be an issue of calibration. I've always had issues getting this controller to calibrate properly, and therefore I don't use the trim controls. I just click it on the screen. Um, then down here we have, uh, I'm still looking for Joy Axis 1. There's Joy Axis 1 is the R Axis Z is, is the trim one. So trim one is Joy R Axis Z. Then we got the little tiny thing on top that's going to make the joystick X and Y slider move. So going forward and back is the X and left and white. Right, that's that little thing above the point of view controller. So now that we've written down what all these actually do on the joystick, I'm going to hit done. And as you can see from my list, joystick L axis X is the one I want to use for ailerons. What I want to use for elevator is this. I'm going to clear this out real quick just so you can uh, see how to do it. So we're going to use LXSY for elevator. Clear current input and then you click validate. So I'm going to click on this. We're selecting the input. We have this whole long list here. So we're going to use LXSY. Now notice there's Y minus and Y plus. Y minus would only use the um, you know, left side, this would only use the right side, this will use the whole thing. In most cases, you're going to want to use the one without the plus or minus. And then we're going to hit validate. As you can see, it's right in there. And now if I move my elevator up and down, this is a joystick back and, uh, you know, going forward and back. You can see it's moving. And I have joystick LXS X set. If I move my joystick left and right, you can see that little bar move. So that shows you that you set the right one up here. Um, you can also program any of the buttons. So um, as you look, there's all these button inputs. As we went over when we were looking at the joystick software, you can see that all these buttons would correspond to a certain thing on the joystick. Then we also have our point of view right here. I'm going to hit cancel, or just select one of these and hit cancel because I don't want to actually set that up. If we go into camera, you're going to have cockpit camera. Now, all these locked ones I don't like really using because you have to click something else to unlock them and then your mouse starts recognizing the same thing. So I like to use the cockpit um, you know, uh, controls that are not locked. So I put POV down here, POV um, you know, with the arrow pointing lower left here. You see all the POVs are set up. Look up and right. Oh, this uh, up and right is the one pointing up to the right. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to go over to our pedals. Um, so for this one, we're going to click on the brakes. As you can see, I have the um, left brake access right there as it goes in. Now on these, if you've noticed, um, when I, I'm pushing the brake down right now and the bar is all the way to the left. And when I release, it goes all the way up. 
So that's why we did need to hit the reverse access button. I'm not sure why this is reversed, but if you want your brakes to go on correctly, you're probably going to need to reverse that. You just click that right there. Um, and you see now, um, so with my brakes, I'm not stepping on the brakes at all right now. And you can see the bars all the way up. That's why they need to be reversed for the game. And then um, we, we also would want to set the uh, rudder. So that's going to be in flight control surfaces, primary flight controls. And as you can see, I got the rudder set up here. Now I didn't use the plus or the minus one just to access Z because I want to use the whole thing. Now we're for the throttles. Uh, I'm going to collapse all here so I can see what I'm doing. We're going to go down to... thinking it's in uh, flight control surfaces if I remember correctly. Oh no, it's in power management down here. So as you see, I have throttle access 1 set to joystick L access Y. If we go into sensitivity, uh, let me uh, separate my controllers here. I'm not sure why. Oh, um, joystick L access Z is um, one of those little R buttons, and it never works correctly for me. As you can see, yeah, this is R1 is joystick L access Z. But as I move the left throttle up and down, you can see it is uh, sometimes moving that other axis. Now, so we know the left throttle is joystick L axis Y, and then we got a other bunch of other stuff moving here as well here. Okay. So the uh, joystick L S X X is the right throttle. Now, the uh, axis the L axis Z and R axis Z, those are those little R buttons. I can never get them to work right though. So I don't use them. But as you see, I have uh, L axis Y set for my throttle one and throttle two is L axis X. Now, if you are on a four engine aircraft like the Boeing 747, you're going to want to um, use the uh, throttle I'm not seeing, oh, throttle access. You're going to want to assign um, your left throttle to this one right here. Now, obviously, then you can't control a two-engine aircraft, but you can control all four engines at the same time using that. So you will need to change that if you're flying a four-engine aircraft. Um, if you're using a one- or two-engine aircraft, you can actually just move them together, um, you know, and, or separate them to control a two-engine. So that's pretty much it for the actual joysticks. Um, so as I showed you, I'm using a sensitivity, moving them around to see what's actually moving here, and then that's how I'm figuring out what goes where. Um, as for the button inputs, as I mentioned, 1 through 4 are the buttons actually on the throttle. 5 through 12 are the buttons on the bottom. So if we um, expand Collapse All, I'm going to show you I went to... If we look at landing gear, I have button 10 set to my toggle landing gear. So you press that, landing gear goes up and down. So that's the second button on the lower row. So you just click on that. On the selected input, you see all the inputs here. Now we do have a point of view switch as well on the throttle quadrant. You can use these to set to whatever you'd like if you want to change something else. Um, we also have these little joystick. I don't know what these are. They don't seem to make any sense. We do have the joist these axes these are that little tiny mini joystick. Um, I'm guessing some of these might be the side joystick on the throttle, and then some of these might be the R but R levers. I can't get those to work correctly on mine since it never really trims or er, uh, calibrates correctly. So hopefully this helped you if you're trying to set up the uh, G940. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments.